Hey, Tarantu fans, it's me again. So, Main Man put out a few days ago a video where he made a tier list not for the characters in Tekken, but for the games themselves. And I thought, wow, what a, what a lot of fun, interesting video. So I thought I'd take a crack at it and do it myself here and just kind of talk through it and let you guys know what I thought. So um, I'm going to do mine a little different than his. His was under the assumption that like you were going to a desert island or something like that, and you could only pick one Tekken game to play forever. What would it be? And then what would your second choice and your third choice and your fourth choice and so on be? I'm going to do mine a little bit different in that what I'm going to do is just rank these according to how I feel about them as a game in total. You know, if it's nostalgia that puts it in that tier, great. If it's because I think this game is bad, that's why it's here, great. That's what we'll do. So just a little bit different than his. Um, because otherwise I think my list would look very similar to his if I had to look at it the way he did. But I'm just going to take these and be like, which one am I more likely to play and for what reason? So let's start right off the bat with uh, taking out the absolute worst of the trash and put Tekken 3D Prime and where are you at Tekken Revolution? Tekken Revolution in the D tier. I've actually never played Tekken 3D Prime. I think it is just a port of like Tekken 6, Tag 2, Era Tekken just on a 3D console with less features. So uh, I'm going to put it down there. I played the games that it was based on. That's good enough. Uh, Tekken Revolution was like a free-to-play game with like paid mechanics and weird like stats and, and things that are not Tekken. So I'm going to put it down here in the garbage pile. Uh, and I would also, it's not on this list, but I would also put Tekken Advance down here if it was. Uh, Tekken Advance is not the worst game. It's not the worst port of a fighter. Uh, it's just not something you would want to play. Uh, it's just not, not that fun. Tekken will always be a console or arcade-based um, you know, 3D fighting game, not a 2D sprite-based two-button fighter. So with that, with the garbage out of the way, let's uh, let's just pick another one. Tekken 4. I'm going to put that in C tier. Uh, Tekken 4 is in a weird place for me. It's it's one of my least favorite Tekkens. I love all the Tekkens, but it's one of my least favorite, just because it has that tiny roster. And the stages are, are weird. They're like uneven stages sometimes, and they have columns in the middle of them. And the, the Tekken 4 just feels very weird. Uh, you know, Tekken 3 was a modernization of the series, bringing the series forward, getting rid of the old clunky movement. And Tekken 4 is in kind of this weird transition phase where it's still got a little bit of that growing up to do that Tekken 3 started, but it's not quite at the movement level of 5, 6, 7 yet. Uh, so it's, it's kind of at the bottom for me. When I go and visit old Tekken games, chances are I'm not revisiting Tekken 4. I know a lot of people really love Tekken 4. Like I said, I played the crap out of it at the time on, on PS2. It, it's a great game. It has a lot of content. It's a lot of fun. But just as far as the attachment I have to it, it's not my favorite. I don't, I don't, I don't often go back to Tekken 4. So jumping around a little bit. To a really good game that I do go back and play a lot that I'm going to put at the very top in S tier is Tekken 2. And I know Tekken 2 is an old, old, old game. Very old. But it's kind of like one of my, you know, some people have Mario 64 or Ocarina of Time. Just this old game that, you know, like Twilight Princess is objectively a better Ocarina of Time. However, I will always go back to Ocarina of Time. And in that same way, I will always go back to Tekken 2. Uh, you know, growing up with parents in the arcade business, I played the crap out of Tekken 2. I picked up Lee for the first time in Tekken 2. Um, I unlocked all the movies and cutscenes as a kid, and I just love that game so much. It was one of the few PlayStation 1 games I had when I first got my PlayStation 1. So I just love that game to death. It's, it's definitely nostalgia at work. And I go back to Tekken 2 quite a lot, believe it or not, just for fun. I'll load the game up and just listen to the music and, and play as the old characters and go through the arcade and the time attack and, and just see all that old quirky PS1 style Tekken stuff. This is probably my favorite Tekken game of all time is Tekken 2. I don't play it the most, obviously, because 7 is where the community is now. But it's my favorite and I love it uh, as far as old school 
Tekken games go. Now let's go into the B tier next. Since we're talking about Tekken 2, we're going to talk about Tekken 1. Tekken 2 is essentially a better version of Tekken 1. They upgraded all the models. Um, they allowed you to break throws. They fixed some of the more egregious, like King's Down Forward 1 being better on block than on hit type stuff in Tekken 2. So Tekken 1 and 2 are very similar games. So if I'm revisiting old Tekken, there's a, a good chance I will load up Tekken 1 because it is such a broken train wreck mess that it's just endearing and fun to play. Like, you know, when you win his Armor King, it says King wins. Yoshimitsu and Kunimitsu have the exact same voice. I mean, it's just a lot of weird stuff, broken stuff in Tekken 1 besides the gameplay that makes it fun to go back and revisit. And, of course, it has half of the soundtrack of Tekken 2 uh, plus the Venezia stage music. So it's just a fun game. It's a fun old-school Tekken experience uh, to go back to. Also, rounding out our B tier, I'm going to put Tekken Tag 1 because it basically takes the early Tekken series, 1, 2, and 3, and smushes them all together. So you don't have the missing characters of 3. You don't have the clunky gameplay of 1 and 2. You get the better gameplay of 3, but it's all in this one nice, neat little package. Um, and it was, of course, the first Tekken released on the PlayStation 2. Played the crap out of it. Loved that game. It introduced Tekken Bowl. Uh, sometimes I still go back and play the old Tekken Bowl. So you gotta love Tag 1. Great game. Great freaking game. Uh, next, what do we have next? Let's go with Tekken 3. So I'm gonna put Tekken 3 kind of here towards the bottom of the B class Tekkens. Um, it's probably the one of the old school Tekkens I play the least of. Uh, just because at the time, you know, I was still hardcore Lee Chao Lan main. Here comes Tekken 3. He's gone. Um, a lot of those old Tekken 1 characters, I had this habit of liking characters that no one else likes. So I played as like Lee and Kunimitsu and Alex. And all those guys are gone for Tekken 3. So when like half your favorites get just axed at the get-go, you kind of feel less affection for a game. So Tekken 3 is kind of at the bottom. I do go revisit it quite a bit when I play old school Tekken uh, definitely more than I do Tekken 4 but uh, yeah I just you know I play I, I'll load it up pick Ogre run through the arcade and I'm pretty much done you know I don't uh, spend some time going over it like I do Tekken Tag 1 and Tekken 2 and those type of things so let's do one at the very top again let's go back to S tier I would put, I'm going to put these two together. I know they're technically separate games almost. I'm going to put Tekken 5 and Tekken 5 DR in the S tier. This was a very special time in my life. I was just getting to the age where I could kind of go to the arcade by myself and have a little bit of freedom. And this is something I really got into was Tekken 5. Uh, you know, they had that great cabinet where you could plug your PS2 remote in. So if you didn't know how to play on a stick, you could, you could hop right in. All you had to do was bring your remote to go play. It had the card system where you could save your stats. I had never seen that before Tekken 5 in America. So that was amazing to do. And I met a lot of good people that I still play with from time to time today during that Tekken 5 scene. And of course, Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection came out later and fixed a lot of the massive gameplay problems of Vanilla 5, like Broken Steve and some of, probably some of Devil Gen's crazier stuff and all of that. But all in all, Tekken was just a great game. Tekken 5 was amazing. The home port um, is one of the first games I can remember just like couldn't stand it. I was so excited for the game to come out. I was just like counting down the days, waiting on it to come out. And, uh, you know, it was such a great home package. You got Tekken 1, 2, and 3 in there. You got Starblade. You got the Devil Within mini game. You got uh, endings for every character, fight money, customizations. Uh, Tekken 5 was just such a freaking good package of a game. And then, uh, unfortunately, DR never made PS2, but I did have the PSP version to still do. And it's a great port for a, um, a portable version of Tekken. It's amazing. I, I love it. I played that game ad nauseum uh, with the, some of the same buddies that we would do locals with, like 10 people locals with Tekken 5. Uh, me and another buddy, we used to have study hall together and a really cool teacher that didn't care. So we would both just bust out the PSP and play Tekken 5 all period. You know, sometimes we would just do Tekken Bowl for an hour and then sometimes we would play matches. 
Uh, it was a lot of fun. I just a lot of fun. A lot of good memories. Special time in my life. Uh, Tekken 5 is up there, man. It's it's really up there. So, um, Tekken 6. We're going to put him in A tier because Tekken 5 was a very special time in my life. The arcade scene was a part of what made Tekken 5 so special. And I remember waiting forever and ever for our Namco arcade to get Tekken 6, and it just seemed like they were never going to get it. And then I remember reading an article on, I think, SD Tekken, which said, like, yeah, Tekken 6 probably isn't coming to American arcades. Um, and that was just heartbreaking to see that because I had, had so much fun playing 5 in arcades with people. And this also meant that you would have to wait like two or so years before it came to console, uh, which is the excruciating part about Tekken nowadays if you're outside of Asia, that you have to watch everyone else play this game, but you don't get to play it for like two or three years. It's so excruciating. Um, to, that they do it that way, but I kind of understand why. But anyway, 6 finally came out, and there were like two or three release day tournaments I went to and won uh, my claim to fame for Tekken 6. I won, you know, those handful of tournaments there, very, very small local tournaments uh, while I was in college. And then I, you know, I plowed through the single-player content about a day or two, a couple of days, and I did play online for a while after that. Uh, I never made it past Grandmaster because I was just like trash. Um, I never practiced or put any effort into really getting better. So I was just single player trash uh, in those days. And so Tekken 6, I had my fun with it for a couple of months and then she kind of dropped off because there was no scene. You know, there was no real online scene, no Tekken Reddit or anything like that like there is now. So uh, yeah, just kind of dropped out of it with. Tekken 6, but it was an extremely good port. There's a lot of content in there. It's a fun game. I freaking love it. Um, but unfortunately, it just didn't stay with me as long uh, for the wait for it. Tekken Tag 2? <sighs> That's a tough game. I'm going to put it at the bottom of B tier because Tekken 7 has some problems, and I'll go into those when we, we talk about Tekken 7. But Tag and Tag 2 had a lot of problems. Um, and it's a shame because the game is a love letter to Tekken. It's got endings for everybody. It's got every character that's ever been in the series with very few exception. It's got um, so much polish. The Fight Lab mode, you know, it's got Kunimitsu's redesigned. It's the only way to play her if you're not playing very old Tekken games. I, I love Tekken Tag 2, but it didn't do much to make me want to compete again after Tekken 5 and 6. Because there's just so much you have to learn. Uh, and that's a common complaint against Tekken in general is there's just, it's a legacy player's game. There is so much that you have to learn to be competitive at Tekken. And Tekken Tag 2 takes all that and like turns the dial up to 11. Because now you can't just have one main, you got to have two. And well, what if your, your old main doesn't mesh as tag partner wise with your second main? Well, you got to learn somebody else. And then the other person. So in your brain's RAM, not only do you have to store your character and your sub-character, you got to store data on your other opponent's character and their sub-data, sub-character data. So it's just so much to learn. And the damage was outrageous. You know, Tekken 7 is kind of creeping in there. But Tekken Tag 2 was just like, let's combo for 40 minutes at a time. And so, while I love the, the port and the single player features and all the content and all the characters, the music is amazing, they gave you all the old endings, you could buy the old music, it was a great game. It just, you know, it's just not my favorite as far as Tekken's. It's, it's got a lot of problems, unfortunately, so I have to put it there. Now, Tekken 7, the question of the hour, where will I put the current entry in the, in the series? which you know how fighting games are with your current entry, Tekken 7. I'm going to put it right here. And it looks like there's a bunch of games in S, but really these are the same, so that's really only two games and two games in A. So Tekken 7, I have spent more time playing Tekken 7 than any of the others, except maybe Tekken 2, just because I was playing it, you know, 20 years, 20 or more years before Tekken 7 came out. 
Competitively, Tekken is better than it's ever been. The scene is more alive. Um, you can play online. There's a lot of good locals, or there was before coronavirus. It's an amazing game. The problems I have with Tekken 7 that keep it from going into S is that at release, the single-player content was abysmal. It really still is. Um, the story mode is okay, I guess. It's kind of bad. Um, Tekken 6 scenario campaign just blows it out of the water. It had cutscenes and it had a brawler mini beat em up game in it. But 7 doesn't have that. It just has this Mortal Kombat X style story mode where sometimes you get to shoot a gun sideways. And that's really the only thing special about it. But like I said, competitively the game is great other than some characters seem too strong in my opinion. It's like the trend is to give characters these big, powerful, all-purpose moves rather than make some characters kind of weak in some areas and strong in others and other characters strong in those areas and weak in those areas, if that makes sense. The risk versus reward is gone for some of the cast. There's a lot of older members of the cast that feel like they're missing something, that these newer and more favored members of the cast get these kind of big, wide, all-purpose, all-encompassing moves that do everything and make the characters easy to play. And I could just be an old man yelling at a cloud. But if you look at all these Tekken games, except for 7, and maybe Tag 2, most of these games are about understanding risk versus reward. And, you know, I'm going to pick a character who's good at wall carry, like Lee. Lee was always the king of wall carry. But now in Tekken 7, everybody can wall carry. So, so what if Lee's good at wall carry? Fakum Rom can wall carry, you know, probably better than Lee can, honestly. And it seems to me like a lot of these new DLC characters just come in so ridiculously overtuned, it just doesn't seem right. It's like the Tekken that I know and love is going away a little bit, and that makes me sad. But that said, I play a ton of Tekken 7, and I freaking love it. So I can't really put it any lower. And it's also the current game in the series. So if you want to play Tekken, you got to play Tekken 7, which I'm fine with because it's a good game. But I do think I see some problems in the core design philosophy. And I understand why they have to simplify Tekken the way that they do. You know, um, casual is where the money is, not necessarily hardcore competition. So a lot of things have become easier and flashier for Tekken 7's sake. And you can go watch my podcast I did with 16-Bit Bump about this. And we talk about Honest Tekken and what that means. You don't see so much Honest Tekken in Tekken 7. If Tekken was, in fact, ever honest. <laughs> that is. So anyway, guys, this is my take on the Tekken game series tier list. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, let me know if you think Tekken 7 is the greatest and the... Rage Arts and things make the game the best it's ever been. Or if you think that Tekken 1 and its brokenness was the epitome of perfection because it makes a deep metaphorical statement about how our lives are all broken in some respect and therefore Tekken 1 is the best game, uh, leave that in the comments below as well. But uh, you're going to need to back that opinion up, buddy. Anyway, thanks for watching so much. I appreciate you all.